Our culture likes to neatly divide things into the categories of knowledge and opinion, uh, fact versus conjecture and speculation. And the kind of knowledge our culture craves is the kind of certainty we crave is generally the knowledge and fact side of things rather than belief. So it sounds very strange that when a Christian comes to confess his faith using the Apostles' Creed, the first words out of the Christian's mouth is, I believe. Belief isn't very honored in our culture. We want to believe it on the basis of it making perfect sense, or I only believe it if I can see it. Those are really the two schools of thought that have come out of the Enlightenment on, on acquiring knowledge, rationalism and empiricism. The one says, I want all of my knowledge to have mathematical sort of certainty, as, as certain as two plus two equals four. The other says, um, no, I have to observe it or test it in a laboratory before I believe it. Well, the problem, I certainly have no trouble with mathematics. Well, I do, I'm not very good at it. I don't have a problem with mathematics in principle, nor do I have a problem with observation and testing in principle. I mean, science has brought us many wonderful benefits. The problem comes when we try to take those two modes of knowledge and make them universally competent for all kinds of knowledge or all kinds of questions or problems we may, might run into. Uh, literally nobody goes through their daily life making decisions on the basis of mathematical certainty. So rationalism just isn't true to life. Well, neither is empiricism. Um, we believe all sorts of things that we've not personally observed and tested. We even believe things that nobody has personally observed or tested. And when you try to take something like that, I have to believe it or see it to believe it. When we take a, a principle like that and expand it to encompass everything, it doesn't work. Why? Well, if I say you should only believe what can be observed and tested, what I'm really saying is I believe that you should only believe what can be observed and tested. Now the question comes now, how do I know that? How do I know that proposition? Did I observe it? No. Did I, did I test it? No. Um, empiricism, observation and testing is not sufficient uh, for all kinds of human inquiry. It's certainly not going to help you uh, in times of suffering. It's not going to help you when you are overwhelmed with a sense of guilt. It's not going to help you resolve that conflict with your neighbor. It's not universally competent. You know, these, I, the, the, the latching on and making an idol of these modes of knowledge, rationalism and empiricism, really just represents, it seems to me, um, human beings' attempt to master the universe on their own. Notice what, what those two modes of knowledge say. It has to make sense to me in order for me to believe it. Um, I must observe and test it before I will believe it. Um, the criteria for knowledge, the criteria for making sense of the world, it all comes from within. Um, it's very self-centered. And yet, into this situation, the Apostles' Creed comes and says, I believe. Well, Christianity is, not, while not denying the benefits of ration, rationality or mathematics or observation and testing, says that, no, we need something. We need a criterion outside of ourselves. We need something transcendent. And so we're going to uh, claim a belief, lay hold of a belief in something that will make sense of everything. The Apostles' Creed is going to give us a summary of what that faith is, and it centers in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, belief in, Christ, in the Christian faith is not the result of our observation or our testing or our reasonings about it. Our reasoning and the skills of observation and testing are the fruits of Christian faith. C.S. Lewis once said it this way, and I think he said it best. I believe in Christianity as I believe in the sun, not only because I can see it, but by it I see everything else.